I'm going to be talking about Arascas lubricoide, or more commonly known, the human runway. This is part, he, part of the phylum Nematoda. First, I'm going to talk about the locomotion or how this worm moves around. The human roundworm moves by threshing back and forth using the longitudinal muscle. As you can see from this picture, the longitudinal muscle is the dark one that goes clear from the tip of the head of the worm to the back of the worm. This muscle right here allows for the flexibility. Next, I'm going to talk about the three main systems of a worm. First, I'm going to start with digest digestion. The worm has a tube digestion system, which means that it, has, it only flows one way and goes in one way and then out the other. Here's a flow chart of the digestive system, starting with the mouth, through the phanax, to the intestine, and out the anus. And right here you can see the diagram of the worm, of it going in through the mouth, through the phanax, to, through the intestine, which it only has one intestine instead of two, like humans, and then out the anus. The next system I'm going to talk about is the reproductive system and the reproduction. So these worms reproduct, um, reproduce sexually, which means it takes a male and female. And the female can lay up to 2,000 eggs. All right, here's a diagram. The first thing you're going to notice is that the female worm is much larger than the male worm. And here you can see where the location of the ovary and the uterus and where the eggs are, like about in the middle of that. And then you can see the male in the fruit rejection. And the last system is going to be the nervous system. The worm, human worm, roundworm system is very simple. Having no proper brain, it, where the brain is of the system is called the nervous ring. Because this is where all the muscles connect at. And there's three major nerves which connect at the nervous ring. Mm. These are the dorsal, lateral, and vertical cords. Okay, here on the diagram you can see the brain slash the ner um, nervous ring. And the here connected at the top is the dorsal nerve cord. In the middle is the lateral nerve cord. And then the ventral nerve cord is at the bottom. These allow for movement and sensory of the worm. So they allow the worm to sense things around him. Now I'm going to touch on um, the interactions with the environment. So they mostly affect people and not in a good way. So people can get these from soil or animal feces like pets or dogs and cats. So these worms usually live in the intestines, but this is mostly the adult roundworm. After larvae hatch, they move up, can move up to the lungs, and then from the lungs, a person can either cough them up or they go back down into the intestine. Symptoms include, but not all, are abdominal pain, diarrhea, coughing, blood tinned sternum, shortness of breath, asthma, fever, and muscle pain. More things can be caused when they travel to other places. So roundworms can also go up to eyes, brains, and stuff like that, which can cause memory loss, nausea, and other. Right here shows how it can go from um, interaction with the soil to a person's inside the intestines to the lungs, up to the um, esophagus, then back down to the lungs and into the stomach. And now for some fun facts. This is, a, the ra human roundworm is the most common species of internal paras intestinal parasites. They can range from a microsop microscopic to two, 20 feet long. They also can be hemophorotic, which means that they can be, have the, organisms organ they can have the both reproductions of the male and female they also have a placebo cellum which means that unlike a normal cellum it's in it's in between just the placement of it is different but it serves the same purpose and uh, they can also affect pets as well as humans well thank you for watching and that will be the end of the video